happy to be in God's house. Say amen. amen. Glad God woke you up this morning. Say amen again. Amen. Glad you was able to put one foot in front of the other. Say amen. amen. If you know you are here where you are at this moment, not of any of your own power, but of God's power, somebody ought to shout amen. amen. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you know God is at work in your life, if you know God is opening doors that you ain't got the power to open, God shutting doors that you ain't got the power to shut, God working out things that you ain't got the power to work out, then every opportunity that you have to come into God's house, you ought to come in with your mouth open, with your hands lifted up, praising and magnifying in the name of God, because it is He that woke you up this morning, He that started you on your way, He that gave you that of your lips. Some of y'all have blessed the name of God this morning. I don't need nobody to help me, man. I don't need no cheerleader. I don't need no hype, man. I don't need nobody to prime me. I brought my own stuff with me this morning. If don't nobody else want to praise him, I praise him all by myself. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, sing it with me, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, sing it with me, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, you sing it now, hallelujah, hey, I've been running every since I made a song.
Amen. You ain't come to say our church this morning. You came to the wrong place. You came to the wrong place. That's where we get. That's where we get to a place to where we don't quench the spirit of God, where we allow the spirit of God to have free course. It ain't about us having our way. It's about letting God have His way. And when you let God have His way, doors to get open, ways to get made. When you let God have His way in your life, get yourself out of the way and let God have His way in your life. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. We want to thank all of you that are here this morning. God bless you. Thank all of you that are watching us this morning via live stream. We pray that you are being blessed by the things that are going on here this morning. And I tell you, God is good. It is not just good some of the time, but it's good all of the time. And if you are, have experienced the miracle working power of Jesus in your life, then you ought to be ready to tell somebody about what the Lord has done for you. Because if he did it for you, I know he can do it for somebody else. Amen. Amen. If you would have this morning, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited this morning. I'm excited because God is good. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11, beginning at verse number 11 and concluding at verse number 17. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Numbers chapter 11, verses 11 through 17. And then right after that, because since we are a New Testament church, I just thought I need a New Testament scripture to clarify what I'm saying from the Old Testament, okay? So, so after we read that, then we're going to run over to talk with Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. Amen. Yeah. Numbers chapter 11, beginning at verse number 11. If you dare say, I'm waiting, preacher. I'm waiting. All right. Somebody, somebody ain't say it. So somebody, somebody still journeying, all right? All right, all right. Numbers chapter 11, beginning at verse number 11. The Bible reads like this. So Moses asked the Lord, why have you brought such trouble on your servant? Why are you angry with me? And why do you burden me with all these people? Did I conceive all these people? Are these all my children? Did I give birth so you should tell me? Carry them at your breast as a nanny carries a baby to the land that you swore to your fathers? Where well, am I going to get the meat to feed all these people? For they are crying out to me, give us meat, give us something to eat. I can't carry all these people by myself. They are too much for me. If you are going to treat me like this, kill me right now. But if I have found favor with you, then don't let me see my misery anymore. The Lord answered Moses, bring me 70 men from Israel known to you as elders and officers of the people. Take them to the tent of meeting and have them stand there with you. Then I will come down and speak with you there. I will take some of the spirit who is on you and put the spirit on them. They will help you bear the burden of the people so that you don't have to bear it by yourself. It, it's already good. It's already good. It's already good. It's already good. But right quick, let's go to 1 Corinthians. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And verse number 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13, it says, No temptation has come upon you except what is common to man. But God is faithful. Somebody say God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. My God, my God. But will with the temptation also provide a way for you to escape it so that you will be able to bear it. Child, look over at somebody and tell them, I got this. Uh, all right, all right, all right. They didn't believe it. Look at the other and say, hey, I got this. Isn't it easy to say stuff like that? I got this. I'm the man for the job. 
I'm the woman for the job. Man, if you're going to use anybody, you need to use me. Until the situation becomes unbearable. And suddenly you find yourself in situations, and if the truth be told, I doubt that there are many people in this room that aren't experiencing some type of, of degree of being overwhelmed in your life, even at this very moment. Uh, 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 if, if you live very long at all, all of your youthful idealism gives way to the hard realities of life itself. Now, when you were a teenager, you thought you knew everything. But when you got, you know, to a place to put everything into practice, you found out that it wasn't as easy as you thought that it was. Life got a way of humbling you sometimes, don't it? Life has a way of making you close your mouth. You are critical of other people's children, but life make you shut your mouth. Life will make you hold your peace. You looked at your neighbor's marriage and said, why he do this, why she do that? But then you got somebody and life made you. Because if you live long enough, you will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed that you say, man, if I just get one more call, if I just get one more text, if one more person bother me, I'm going to lose my mind up in here, up in here. Before you can get off one phone call, somebody else is calling you. Before you can get with doing one text, somebody else is texting you. You get off of here, you gotta check your email. Somebody's here, the doorbell ringing. Man, when is somebody just gonna give me some peace? There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life. By people. By your own issues. By your own circumstances by demands of life, by the struggles that you go through in life, and yes, by the temptations that you face in life. It reminds me very much of, if you ever watch a movie and it got a fight scene, if you watch the fight scenes in the movies, it, it's five guys all beating up on one guy. And, and it's interesting how they all come one at a time. In the movies, you can do karate if they come one at a time. But if 10 come at one time, man, you ain't got but two feet and you ain't got but two hands. I mean, what you gonna do with all those people come? What you gonna do with the other eight all coming at one time? Amen. And sometimes we like to think that life comes to us in courses, but it does not. In reality, sometimes you got 10 issues and they all hit you the same weekend. And, and it's not long before you feel overwhelmed. Somebody just say to yourself, I can't take it no more. There are moments like that, that, that into your hearts and into your spirits. And this is what the text is talking about. It is coming to the church at Corinth. And yes, it is talking about morality. And yes, it is challenging sin. And yes, it is challenging the issues that are prevailing against this church who has converted to Christianity from a hedonistic background, from promiscuities, from lust, and from self-indulgences. And now they're trying to walk circumspectly before God walking before God circumspectly is not an easy thing now I'm going to lose some of y'all in this text because I know we are people who think that serving God sometimes is just coming to church that, 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 that they really continue to be who they were before and it's just that they added another day of the week to their schedule when they got something to do but if you really take living for Christ seriously and you have a consciousness of your morality and your responsibility there's a certain amount of pressure because there's a constant war going on in you between what you're supposed to do and what you want to do between how you're supposed to respond and how you're tempted to respond have you ever had somebody to say something to you and you just say oh good god i'm mad <laughs> Woo! jesus got you today for you uh, because you had to hold your peace and you realize hey man that was that in my life i wouldn't have been so quick to hold my peace now see 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 that that, that silly grin on my face is combating all the things that are coming to my head. 
and there's an argument going on in my head of all the things that I could say back to you, that I used to say, that I would like to say, and yet the Holy Spirit is muzzling my mind. The Holy Spirit is holding me down and it's not without restraint because I want to. It's not without pressure because there's another part of me that says, oh man, you just let me get out. You know, these people are trying to fit into something that does not feel like them because when you put on Christ, you can't feel like you and put on Christ at the same time. Because your nature and the nature of Christ are two totally different things. This was the city that was filled with debauchery, whoremongering, lust and depravity, orgies that they were a way of life. Incest was a normal thing. They were doing whatever they wanted to do, however they wanted to do it. And then they got to say they embraced the spirituality, the gifts of the spirit, the working of the moving of the spirit. But when it came down to morality that was associated with, it was not that appealing to them. And that was a struggle and they thought that it wasn't fair to them. It's not fair. My, my, my course has already been said. My habits are already my course. I like what I like. I want to do what I want to do. It's not fair that you want me to change something. And Paul writes to them and says, there is no, somebody say no. no. There is no temptation. Not one. Not of any kind. Not of any brand or name. Style or brand. No, not anything. There's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. Then it says, God is faithful. That's the good part. Yeah. It didn't say we were faithful, yeah. but it said that God was faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. I didn't say he wouldn't suffer you to be tempted at your comfort. I didn't say that it wouldn't suffer you to be tempted above your convenience. It said that he would not suffer you to be tempted beyond that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. He will always give you a way out, but you got to be able to bear it. The faithful God enters midstream into the text that we have right here. And the first thing that we learn about him is that he is faithful. But the second thing that we learn is that the faithful God knows your ability. The faithful God knows your ability, which brings us into an aspect of God that I think you think about today. God is your architect. That he has designed you like an architect designs when he's constructing a building. You must understand that though the architect does not drive a bulldozer or pick up a hammer or a nail or lay a brick or a block, he builds the building with specs to determine what grade of concrete, what grade, what level of steel, what type of wood is gonna go in the building. He designs that construct to determine how much weight it's going to be able to bear. Yes, you, you are a designer's original, designed by God, who has been your architect, designing your strength and your will and your personality and your tenacity that you may be able to determine what you are going to bear. So when God says that you are able to bear it, it is not a word of encouragement. This is the word of the architect talking to his construction. And if he built you, he ought to be able to know what you are able to handle. That's why you're not going through what the lady behind you is going through. Because your test and your temptation is determined by how you are constructed. And God won't put more on her because you can't take what she can take and she can't take what you can take. Oh, y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. I have, 
I have a divine design saying, I, they say I have been designed by God. I didn't just arrive. I didn't just get here. I did not just happen. I am not an incident. I am not a mistake. I have been designed. I have been created in the image of Jesus Christ, designed to bear things that other people cannot handle. Do things that other people cannot do. Put up with stuff that other people can't put up with. I have been designed to the glory of God. That's why you ought not covet your neighbors anything. Don't ask for their car. Don't ask for their house. Especially don't ask for their husband or their wife. Don't ask for their job. Don't ask for their ministry because the worst thing in life is to be put in a position that you are not designed for. You've been designed for it. You have been designed, but just because you have been designed doesn't mean you don't feel the hit and the weight of life. Three times, Paul's example goes in prayer himself saying, Lord, take this thorn out of my flesh. This is uncomfortable. This is unreasonable. I don't like this. Take it away. God looked at the specs and said, my grace is sufficient. Oh, 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 and the things that we want God to lift off of us only to hear him say, my grace is sufficient for thee. Fix me so I don't hurt anymore. No, my grace is sufficient for thee. Now Moses, a great example of a man of faith and a man of power. The man who withstood the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt is about to break trying to help people that won't help themselves. I'm wondering, is there anybody in here this morning who's trying to help somebody that ain't trying to help themselves? Who's constant whining and incessant adolescent attitude that their childish grown people, talk back to me if you can, are enough to make you fall down on your knees and say, God, what did I do wrong? You look across from your desk to the person that say, God, what did I do wrong now? Some of you roll over and say, look. <laughs> what do you do when life just don't seem fair? How do you deal with it when in life is not what you expected? When you find yourself with mighty visions and mighty plans and mighty goals but everybody around you is just on a level of mediocrity how do you manage your miracles while you still living in misery these are the questions that are laying before us today how do you survive in an unbearable situation what do you do when it is no longer fun to be you I think for the rest of my life, I remember we were doing a study group on, on campus my last semester, and uh, uh, one of the guys, he asked a question. He said, Preacher, do you ever think I would get to a place in my life where I'd be happy? I remember that forever. He didn't say, you think I ever be saved? I'm, I'm a child of God, but will I ever be happy? He didn't say, do you ever think I'll get the job that I want, but do you ever think I'll be, be happy? Do you ever think i have the big house on the hill, the white pick of fit? He didn't say that, but he said, do you ever think I'll be happy? You know, because you can have a job and still not be happy. You can have a spouse and still not be happy. You can have all the education that you want in the world and still not be happy. There are days that you can be really blessed and still be really burdened. There are people who have experienced miracle working power and still feel miserable. What did I do? Why can't I have the life that she has? Why can't 
I hit the lottery. God is over 700 million. I'm going to break you off. Why can't? God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able. But will with the temptation also provide a way for you to escape. He didn't say run from it. But for you to be able to escape. That ye may be able to bear. My question is, can you live with being yourself? Can you live with being you? Moses could. He said, God, if my life is going to be like this, kill me. Let me die. I don't want to live. Moses, wait. You are the man of God. I mean, you the guy that part the water and stuff. And in your private prayer life, you want to die. Why do you want to die? Were you a fan of Pharaoh and his 600 chariots? Absolutely not. But the constant pulling of people who want more and more and more. Give us fish. We don't like this. Give us leeks and onions. We don't want this. Where, where, where the manna at? I'm hungry. Where the water at? I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. It's cold out here. I want a bed. I want this. I want that. Don't your phone ever ring like that? Do you ever get emails? Do you ever get texts like that? Can, can you just do something for yourself? I need to talk to you about my problem. I need to talk to you about mine too. When are you available? But you don't get to say that, do you? He says, in so many words, Moses says, God, it hurts being me. It, it, hurt, it hurts being me. What do you do when being you hurts? And God says to him, all right, set aside 70 elders that you know to be elders and bring them down and I'm going to come down and talk to you. And he says, I'm going to take of your spirit and I'm going to put it in 70 elders I'm going to teach you how to delegate some stuff I'm going to teach you I'm going to teach you that you are a limited resource I'm going to show you how to delegate your responsibilities into a wider array of people so that you can cope with your calling so that you can deal with your situation so that you can have to be a single mother so that you can have to run your business when your bills are passed due deal with life But here's the thing that got me. All of that I knew. But then I looked at something. When God comes down to meet with the 70 elders. And the glory of the Lord moves down into the pain of being Moses. God does not bring his spirit to give to 70 elders. He takes of the spirit of Moses. And gives it to the 70 elders. Look at Moses' capacity. Moses was a man strong enough. That he could be divided among 70 men. He had so much within him. That God could take something out of him. Even though he felt like he couldn't bear it. God said man you don't know what you got. Working on the inside of you. And I want to say to somebody this morning. That feel like giving up. Feel like throwing in the towel. Reach way down on the inside. And you'll find that strength. That you did not think that you had. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord. Shall have renewed strength. They'll mount up on wings as eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk. And not faith. He said, he said, he said, let me show you what's in you. You got enough in you that you can take what's in you and put it in somebody else. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? So, so God says, 
you've been stressing about not having enough, not being able to bear it. But you got all that you need already on the inside. You got everything that you need. Man, you thought that it was just a little bit of stick. And that stick has parted waters. You thought it was just a stick. That stick, you threw it on the ground. It became a snake. Picked it back up. It became a rod again. You are the man that do. you did not have any power. You yourself came from the slaves of Egypt. Yet I told you to speak to the rock. And when you spoke to the rock, water came out. That was able to quench the thirst of my people. Everything that you need, Moses, is already on the inside of you. So he says, he says, he says, what you have, what you need is already on the inside of you. And you got to realize when you start talking stuff like this, the devil get upset. He get mad. He don't like, he don't like this kind of talk. See, as long as you walk around here, I can't handle it. I want to die. I'm about to lose my mind. The devil is happy. Him and his minions, they happy. But when you start saying, I can do all things through Christ. That gives me the strength. Hell get nervous. Demons start trip. The devil gets upset. Storms come. Winds blow. Lightning flashes. Things aren't fair. Things are upsetting. They're nerve wracking. But the very fact that he allowed it to happen, seeing that he is the architect, it is a sign that he has looked at the specks of your life. He knows what he put on the inside of you. He knows that his grace is sufficient enough to get you to the other side. And somebody need to realize what you got on the inside some of y'all know you've been through some stuff in your life it, that if anybody would have told you that you would have had to deal with it you would have said man ain't no way I can handle that ain't no way ain't no way I, can, I lose my mind but you realize that after you went through the situation that the same God that was with you during the situation has walked with you every step of the way after you got on the other side. And strength that you didn't even know you had is now coming up out of you. Faith that you did not even know you had is coming up out of you because you're walking with the master. Yes, Moses, Moses said, you know what? If it's going to be like this, kill me. I'm tired of my misery. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of dealing with this. And Moses wasn't necessarily fed up with something that he had done. Moses was fed up with all them niggas out there walking with him. <laughs> Moses was tired. You know, you know Moses was tired. You got millions of us out here. Ain't no KFC, ain't no Popeyes, ain't no pot of South Soul Food, B, ain't none of that. You got us out here. Lord, I'm, I'm trying my best. And you cannot say that there are not people in your life that don't work your nerves. You cannot say that there are people in your life right now that every other day, if not every day, God, why are you, why are you burden me like this, Lord? What did I do, Lord? What did I do to deserve this? Because people sometimes, it don't feel like they understand. You got stuff going on yourself. And, 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 and you know, we do a good job. We do a good job because we camouflage. We put our good mascara. We put your good face on before you come out the house. But, and knowing that you're hiding behind a mask, but behind the mask is pain. Amen. Behind the mask is turmoil. Behind the mask is strife and everything else that you're having to deal with. And here come everybody else with their problem. I'm hungry. 
some odds, I want chicken. <laughs> Send me and I want fish. I'm tired of manna. It came out of a bird mouth. I don't know where that bird been eating that. We can't get clean water. Gotta get water out of the rock. What, what's going on? No. All of this going on. And these people have so soon forgot where they just came from. What God had just done. How that God had parted the waters of the Red Sea. Allowed them to cross. Brother Reed, when they got to the other side, they didn't have mud between their toes when they got to the other side. And, and, and look, the enemy that was trying to hound them down, God allowed them waters to close down and it drowned. It drowned their enemies. Their enemies were drowned. And he told them that the enemies that you see today, the Egyptians that you see today, you'll see them no more forever. God will take care of some stuff in your life in such a way that you will never have to worry about it. But be real with yourself this morning. You've been Moses before. Yes, Come on now. You've been Moses before. You have reached a point in your life where you say, God, this is too much for me. I can't do it. Why? And it feels like, Lord, I just got through fighting this fight. Now here comes something else. I cannot do it. But God says, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You got to first of all realize life and death is in the power of the tongue. Stop saying what I can't do, what I'm not able to do, what I don't have. I might not have it right now, but it's on the way. It's, in, sir, it's coming from somewhere. It's on the way. You must not realize that my father is rich in houses and land. The silver and the gold, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to my God. And if I would but go down to him in prayer, whatever I ask, he'll give it to me. There has no temptation overtaken you, but such as is common to man. What that mean, preacher? You ain't going through nothing else. Ain't nobody else experience. Let me bring it to the brother sister version. You ain't dealing with nothing. You ain't the only one that, that you ain't the only one that is. You ain't the only one that has ever cried. You ain't the only one that didn't experience what you're going through. So stop saying God ain't fair. You just ain't faithful. There has no temptation overtaken you, but such as is common to man. God is your architecture. He built you all throughout your life. Do you realize that every storm that you ever went through was a part of your construction? Every battle that you ever went through, it was a part of your construction process. Every sleepless night that you ever had, it was a part of the construction process. So since he's the constructor, and since he's been working on me, he may not have been the one that put him on the nail. He may not have been the one that put down any concrete, laid any bricks, but he knows my specifics. Yes. He knows what I am able to handle. Yes. He knows my limit. So if I'm going through it, I got this. Yes. I got it. I got it. It may seem unbearable. I'm not going to say it doesn't. We, we just talked about Moses. Moses got to a point. Lord, he, based, he said it. It's too much for me to bear. But the song said, I must tell Jesus. All of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my despair, he kindly will help me. Jesus can help me. Jesus. Jesus alone. 
stop trying to depend on yourself. Stop trying to depend on the strength that you have to be able to deal with life because you can't do it. Moses said, you know what, Lord? It's just one me and all these people. It's just what me. And all of these walking with me. Lord, I need help. I need some assistance. So I said, Why the pick you seven, seven elders? You got look that thing. I, I ain't even gonna tell you who to get. You go out and pick. You the man of God, you ought to know who worthy. Yeah, go out, go out. Go out, go out and pick seven. Of them. And bring them back to me. God said, I'm going to come down and talk to you. And the same man that said he wasn't enough. The same man that said he could not bear it. Do you ever find yourself being weak to your own situations? But still you're able to give other people encouragement. You're able to strengthen other people. Man, I wish I could give this advice to myself. Man, I wish I could build myself up like this. But sometimes what you can't do for yourself, you can do for somebody else. So, 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 Mo, so Mo, Moses, he said, Moses, he said, Moses, go out and pick your 70 men and bring them, and bring them in. God said, you know, I'm going to teach you how to, how to regulate and delegate some stuff. Show you something. I'm going to teach you how to set some things in order. Yes. And God did not take of his spirit. I would have understood that. You know, God, I, I would have understood. I would have, I, I, he didn't bring his spirit. But he took out of the spirit of Moses. And put it in seven different men. And they were able to help him in the things that he needed to do. Stop trying to do everything by yourself. Amen. Stop trying to carry your house by yourself and, and you, you don't live by yourself. Come on now. Come on now. Stop trying to carry, even on your job, stop trying to do all the work. Stop letting folk be lazy and make you do everything. You make them accountable. Oh, they just know you so nice. That sister and brother so and so. Oh, I, I know if they see that I ain't did something, they're going to come behind me. And they're going to be, man, we get paid the same amount to do the same job. Unless you're going to give me your check. You need to do your job. Learn how to regulate. Learn how to delegate some things. Learn how to pass some things on. Because when you try to take on the world by yourself, you get weighed down. Yes, sir. When you try to take on so much stuff by yourself, and see, especially in a worldly sense, when you take on so much stuff and you get battered down, then God's house takes a back seat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because we're taking care of the affairs of everything else, but we forget about God. Oh man, club open at 11, I'm there at 1030. You know, you know, you know uh, look, club over there, I'm there. Church start 10. Oh, y'all still have Bible study? Yes, we still have Bible study. 9 o'clock a.m. every Sunday morning. Yes, we still have Wednesday night Bible study. 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. You're welcome to attend. <laughs> I'm not able to bear it. I'm not able to do it. I cannot succeed. I cannot achieve it. You got this. You got it. Because of what's already in it. He said it was according to the power that worketh in you. Not because of you or anything that you can do or anything that you've done the power of God at work in your life. Yes, Lord. Lord, what am I going to do? It's such a grave responsibility. Yes, sir. That's why you got to be careful what you ask for. Lord, I want to serve you. I, Lord, I, I, I want to do your will. Be careful. Yes. Because with a different level comes a different weight load. 
comes a different array of issues and problems that you got to deal with. And if you're struggling in preschool, you ain't ready for elementary. <laughs> if they taking your lunch in elementary, you ain't ready for junior high. They taking your girl from you in junior high, you ain't ready for high school. <laughs> with different levels come different responsibilities. With different levels come different battles that you got to fight. And Moses is a man that was put in a situation. He was the man for the job, undoubtedly. He was the man for the job. Because if he was not the man for the job, God would not have put them in that position. So, so can I tell you something? Wherever you are, God put you there. Because if God didn't want you to be there, you wouldn't be there. So stop saying what you can't do because you can do it because God put you there. And if he put you there, he's going to sustain you while you're there. Yes. I'm excited, church. Yes. I'm excited because we got this. Yes, sir. We got it. Yes. There's nothing that we face that we cannot overcome. There's no goal that we set that we cannot achieve. Yes. We're going to have to be willing to put in the work. Yes. Yes. And we're going to have to be willing to remain faithful. You know, Moses could have said, you know what? I'm out. And went on about his business. But even in his misery, he went to God. Trouble and despair, he went to God. He, he didn't go talking to the other folk out there in the crowd. Because all, it, all they was going to do is mumble and keep on complaining. Oh, he don't even know if he want to lead us no more. He, he don't even know if he want to do the will of God no more. He, he questioning God, telling God he want to die. Telling God that he can't take it. Telling God what he can't do. Well, huh, he, what are what, what we going to do? He didn't do that because Moses realized, man, y'all struggling just like I'm struggling. Y'all trying to get to the promised land just like I'm trying to get to the promised land. So if I'm going to have assistance with what I'm going through, I need to go to a rock that is higher than I. I need to go to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can even ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You got it? You can do this. You can be faithful to Christ. You can be faithful to the body of Christ. You can love your family. You can do it. If you make the decision in your mind to do it. It's, it has everything in your life, church. It got to be intentional. You got the purpose to do it. You got the purpose. It's not just going to happen. Could happen. Poof. Not just going to fall out the sky. Not snap, crackle, pop. It's not going to happen like that. You're going to have to be intentional. Put the work in. The only way, you, the only reason you look for that direct deposit is because you've been putting in work. I, I, I'm not looking for, that man, I ain't been on no folk job in two, three weeks. I ain't looking for no check. I know I'm not, I'm not going to get no check. If you not faithful to God and if you don't give your all to him why are you looking for blessing oh God I want you to open up the windows of heaven pour out a blessing why I don't even have room enough to receive it but I can't even come to church preach you know it's a pandemic you go to the hair salon you get your nails there you go to Walmart, everybody up in Walmart, you go to the mall, you go here, you go there, but you can't go to church. Be real with yourself. You go where you want to go, and you do what you want to do. I'm making excuses about it. We do what we call an ace, an ace, and a spade, a spade. Stop making excuses. You do what you want to do. Why not serve God? You can do it. 
You got what it takes. Why not be faithful? You got what it takes. Stop letting the devil ride because if you let him ride sooner or later, don't let the devil put him out where you at right now. You got to get out. You can't go a mile further in this ride. Get out, devil. You can't ride. I ain't got no room for nobody but God in my life. Put God at first place in your life. Make him number one. He ought not be number three, number four. No, he ought to be number one in everything that you do. For if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things, they'll be added unto you. But he got to be first, y'all. He got to be first. I want to encourage you today. You got this. You can do it. You got it. You can do this. You can make it over this hill. You can make it up this mountain. You can get through the valley. You got what it takes. Tell somebody, I got what it takes. My brother, my sister, if you are here today, or maybe you're watching us, and you don't yet know Christ Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you have not yet come into a saving relationship with Christ. I'm sure out of all the broadcasts that you get to flip through and you get to watch this morning, that there are many people around this time that are offering invitations, they're extending to you opportunities for you to be saved, for you to come to Christ. But I would have you to know that God has given us a prescription in the word of God on what we ought to do as it pertains to matters of our salvation. God saw the condition that we were in, so he sent his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ into this world to save men from their sins. That was you, you the woman, you the man. You were the one that were in sin. He came down to save us from our sins. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse number 18, when Jesus came on the scene, it said that when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and he said unto them, he said, Whom do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, or one of the other Old Testament prophets. But Jesus said, Okay, I hear that. But in the face of all of these idol gods, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus said, he, Peter said thou art the Christ the son of the living God he said blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you but my father which is in heaven and I say to you that thou art Peter and upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I will give you the keys to the kingdom gave him a set of keys that he used on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 the Bible says they were gathered together their men from all nations there were Parthians there were Medes there were were Eliamites, there were dwellers in Cappadocia and Asia, they were gathered together and there came a sound as of a mighty rushing wind that filled the place where they were sitting and it sat upon them cloven tongues like and unto fire this was what Joel had just prophesied about in Joel chapter 2 where Joel said in the last days I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and see vision and, and, and after Peter on that day had preached the word of God they were pricked in their heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do and Peter told him he said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so friend beloved come by here in his word Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 says so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God after hearing one must believe the same he said except that you believe that I am he you shall die in your sins after belief you repent of your sins we know that repentance is not just the utterance of words but repentance is a mental change a change within myself that shows up outside of myself and after repentance I confess with my mouth the sweetest name not Buddha not Muhammad not anybody else but the name of Jesus I confess that Jesus is the son of the living God Amen. And after that, I'm willing to be baptized, have my sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. Maybe you're here today or maybe you're watching us. You're standing in the need of prayer. I believe that's, that's all of us. But maybe you're here and you just want, you have a special prayer request. You have that opportunity to get prayer on today. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. Who says that you'll get to live today? 
to see tomorrow. Today that you hear his voice, heart and not your heart. Come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Sick, he did visit far from the peaceful shore.